Amen. 1 Samuel 17, this morning, may the Holy Ghost help us. Amen. I'm looking in verse number 46. I'll start reading there. David said, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fa and unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. Uh, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into the fore his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and he slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. I want to preach this morning if God will help me just a little while on the battle. Amen. The battle. Here's a battle right here in the Word of God. All kind of battles in the Bible there. But I'm glad, thank God, that God is always on the up end of it. And I'm glad, thank God, I know He's the one that fights the battle. And that's why David said the battle is the Lord's. And we all face battles. It don't matter who you are, we got battles that we face. Here in this text, their Philistines rose up against the Israelites uh, and of course the champion uh, uh, Goliath he was just uh, standing on one side of the mountain uh, with the Philistines and on the other side uh, uh, of the mountain was the was the Israelites uh, and the Philistine uh, uh, Goliath come out for 40 days uh, and made himself before uh, uh, the Israelites uh, and said send a man to fight me. Uh, he challenged them uh, uh, to send a man to fight uh, uh, him huh? and he said uh, the one that wins uh, uh, the other one had to serve amen uh, uh, the other one huh? of course all the Israelites were uh, scared and fearful uh, and wouldn't fight him huh? thank God that one day David a, a shepherd boy uh, uh, went down and saw what was going on huh? and the Bible said he got uh, you can feel the, in this scripture here uh, as David seen what was going on uh, uh, that there was something in him uh, Thank God that rose up uh, and said this Philistine's blaspheming our God. Uh, he's defying the armies uh, of Israel uh, and we need to take a stand. Amen. Uh, and he said there's a cause. There's a reason. Uh, thank God to stand. Uh, uh, the rest of that crowd wouldn't stand. Uh, uh, but thank God there was one by the name of David that had been anointed uh, in the prior chapter. Uh, uh, now he's going up. Uh, thank God to uh, uh, want the battle uh, uh, this giant. Huh? Now, he wasn't only a giant, he was a man of war. Huh? He was a champion. Huh? Right. Amen. I mean, if you if you think about it, huh? uh, this man's about 10 foot tall. Huh? He's got armor from head to toe, huh? and he knows what he's doing. I mean, if a man's called a champion, huh? looks like he's had some battles before, huh? and nobody can beat him. Amen. Huh? Uh, but here he's a fighting against not man, but God. Huh? And really, when you look at it, it really is that. It's man versus God. And I know who's going to win every time. Amen. It don't matter what a man tries to do, he can't defeat the God of heaven. Amen. Every battle God fights, he wins. There's never been a fight God has not won. But here David, thank God takes it upon himself because he doesn't have some experience watching sheep. 
sheep. He had done took down a lion and a bear. And now, thank God, the Philistine didn't seem much of nothing to him. He knew, thank God, God was with him. Hey, if you ever know God's with you, there's a lot of things you'll do that you know God's doing. And you're not afraid to go forward. You know why some of you won't fight the battle? It's because you're afraid that you'll fail. But I'll tell you one thing. If you realize who's a fighting for you, that'll take the fear away and cause you to fight. Amen. I tell you, we need some warriors in this hour that'll be willing to fight. But I'll find out the real battle. My friend wasn't as much as Goliath as it was within. And that's where all battles are. They're not one without but until they won within. And you'll have to get within of that battle won. If you're going to win the battle, that's without. I'm amazed in this day of how we've let the champion of this world and people, my friend, back us up. And we're on the winning side. We've already won. And thank God, my friend, we ought to fight the fight. The battle's already been won. David knew, thank God, the battle was the Lord's. Amen. I don't know what you're going through, but I'll tell you one thing. If you just realize every battle you face, that the battle is the Lord's, and he knows how to take care of it. Amen. Now, sizing this thing up, I mean, in the eyes of men, it didn't look too good. And I'm talking about, now really in realization, stand up here if you will, if you don't mind. I asked him how tall he was. He's 6'3 now, and I'm 5'10", so I'm pretty short to him. And, uh, but that still wouldn't be the sizing up of what it, what it really would be. Let me borrow this little old boy here. Come here. Come here, John. I ain't going to bother you. Amen. But it'd be about like this in size. I mean, David, he was he probably wasn't about five foot something at the most. Amen. You take a man Goliath, he was nine nine. I mean, it's about in, in about size. That's what it'd be like. It'd be this little old boy fighting against a man like his. That's right. Is that not right? You know where the battle is. I'm gonna tell you where the battle is. Yes, you can be. See, it's a sight battle. Yeah. That's where the battle is. It's a sight battle. It, you, you try to figure this thing out and say, now, uh, what I'm looking at uh, uh, and how I see these things, we can't win. It's, that's the way the Israelites looked at it till David got there. They saw this champion marching uh, uh, for 40 days uh, and he come out and, and they saw him so big uh, and his size so, uh, uh, my friend, bigger than what they were uh, and, and they seen the giant, amen. Uh, now, I won't say this, they didn't see God, uh, they seen the giant. Uh, there's some giants in your life this morning you're looking at uh, uh, that you ain't got victory over. Uh, Hey, Amen. You say, preacher, that's, that's a big thing. I mean, there's a lot of big things in our lives that we face. Hey, it, might, it might be the giant of insecurity. Hey, might be the giant of fear. Hey, might be the giant of doubt. Hey, it could be the giant, my friend. Hey, that's right, a, a failure. Hey, the fear of failure. Hey, there's a lot of things. Hey, Amen. I'm going to tell you what, if God could get you to see that we don't need to look at how big the giant is and we don't need to look we don't have to look at uh, my friend of, of, of what we're facing uh, we need to look thank God to him uh, that can take down the giant uh, and that's where the victory's at I'm trying to help you this morning uh, uh, you see the first response is uh, uh, we look at how big the problem is uh, uh, we look how big the giant is uh, and we'll start wondering uh, uh, and thinking on how we can uh, God to win. But the ultimate thing is we see we can't. I've heard people say, preacher, I've really tried, but I can't get no victory. Well, the problem is not in God. The problem's in you. That's right. Now, boys, there's some things this morning, wouldn't you like to just get nailed down and say within my own heart, I'm tired of fighting this. Amen. I, this giant that keeps getting up. I won't say one thing. When David got through with him, he wasn't going to get up. Amen. 
I tell you what he done, he took the giant sword and cut his head off and thank God took it back into the city and they sang and praised God for what God did and he said Saul killed his thousands but David his ten thousands and all of a sudden Saul had a giant of jealousy in his life and in fact it also took his life and ended up killing him really he always wanted to pursue David because of the kingdom but I'm telling you there's a bigger battle in him than it was outside of him and that's where the battle is this morning you say preach there's some giants in my life I'm just preaching to you this morning on how to win the battle now I won't say you better not look at how big it is boys I'm telling you it's altar time right now a lot of us have just looked at how big this thing is we're facing I don't know what it is you're facing but I do know God can take care of it and the battle's his amen they only say it was a, a sight battle, battle they said look at that big old giant hey God look at the armor that man's a carrying look at the spear he's got he's even got a man out there before him holding up before him amen and he's a cursing us and it is a satanic battle too you got to realize who your enemy is then not the writer Paul say we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rules of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places and so the battle's not only a sight battle but it's a satanic battle that means that the devil's going to use who he can to try to hinder you that's right he wants you to be fearful of, of, of my friend of going forward and fighting the battle and so he uses people you know he cursed David he my friend disdained David he, he made fun of the Israelites he called them my friend by names and then he went out every day don't you know that old pride thank God that that, that enemy had hey you know the day we're outnumbered when it comes down to born again Christians when it comes down to the old time church we're outnumbered in this hour well there's a whole lot more people that's going the modern way and going my friend the world's way than they are our way or God's way and I must say the devil he likes to threaten us and the devil likes to threaten me I don't know if you recognize that but he likes to threaten us he's a threatening them because he sees fear in them and sees that he can whoop them amen listen to this if the devil can threaten you and cause you to fear amen and not get the grace and the power of God on you then he's got you whooped amen that's why you need to realize thank God that we got somebody that's greater than he is that can fight our battles amen I'm going to tell you that old blasphemer and them that make mockery of God they'll always be around I mean didn't that Peter say and the last day scoffers will come that people like to scoff and make joke about the things of God but I'm telling you one thing my brethren that's all he can do and it is a satanic battle amen and he tries his best to cause fear in your life amen that's right they don't say this it really is a strength battle it's between God and man See, have you ever recognized this in every age or dispensation there's always been somebody the devil would try to use against God's people he used Pharaoh against God's people Nimrod against God's people I mean you can go back to Genesis it was Nimrod, Cain, Nimrod uh, my friend then it come it come along here come Pharaoh uh, amen always against God's people you go through the Bible and you see all these kings uh, amen like Ahab and different ones that was always brought up to, uh, to be a war and against God's people uh, look at the New Testament here comes uh, them uh, my friend Herod and Caesar uh, and Pilate uh, amen and, and all all through there. Thank God in history, friend. 
we find them uh, uh, that warred against the people of God. They fought against God's people. Uh, and there always is somebody uh, in the system. There's a religious system. Uh, and they always want to fight. Uh, amen. That's what Saul was doing. He was persecuting the church. Uh, and God, he, but God, what God say? He said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Uh, and Jesus said, you persecuting me. Uh, and the fact of it is, there will always be a fight. Uh, you say, what's the battle over in power? That's what the battle over. That's who wants the power. That's what the battle's over. There's all kind of battles in this day. And the battle most of the time deals with power. Amen. That's what it deals with. When, when there's battles in a home, it usually deals with some kind of power. Or deals, it deals with something, not only power, but it deals with pride. Right. Or an arrogant way that the devil tries to get in a home. And there's always a power structure. That's why, that's why the generation that's being raised now, they don't respect authority. It's because it's a power that, that, that God's anointed and ordained. Huh? Amen. That people war against and fight against. That's the whole thing. Goliath wanted, uh, he wanted dominion. He wanted power over uh, the Israelites. Uh, and there'll always be somebody that wants to capture you. Uh, amen. And sin wants to capture you. Uh, amen. To keep the power over you. You, uh, that you won't be delivered, amen. Right. Hey, get this here. Boy, I thought about this the other day. I was preaching up at the attention center, and I was telling them fellows about different things. But I said, the whole reason of, uh, of the allurements of the devil is to capture you. What Goliath, he wanted the power over them. Yeah. He wanted to capture them. He wanted to overtake them. Mm -hmm. Do you realize this morning that the devil wants to capture you? Yeah. Then not the Bible said over there in the book of Timothy, some were captured by him. Yeah. Amen. That's right. And the fact of it is it's all dealing with power. Amen. Why did the devil get thrown out of heaven? Why did Lucifer get cast down to the earth? It all dealt with power. Yeah. It dealt with him wanting to be like God. It wanted to be like God. What's this man fighting Israel for? He wants to capture the and have power over them. Amen. That's right. It's a satanic battle. It's a strength battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. I found this out in my Christian life that I do have a battle in the spirit. See, in man's a spirit. Every man has a spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every man has a body, soul, and spirit, threefold yeah. creature. Yes, sir. The soul is saved from sin. The spirit's regenerated to commune with God. Where's the devil going to attack you? He's going to attack you in the inner man. He's going to do what he can to cause grief to you. It's a spiritual battle. It's, it's, sometimes it's, it's difficult, uh, uh, my friend, uh, ain't God to go on when our spirit's not right uh, or our spirit's being grieved. Uh, that's why he said grieve not in the spirit. Uh, quench not in the spirit. Uh, uh, why? Because the battle's in here. Uh, amen. Uh, and if he can defeat your inward man, uh, amen, it's a battle to keep your heart right. It's a battle to stay right. It's a battle to keep your eyes right, amen. amen. It's just a battle, amen. Yeah. That's right. Somebody said, why did I do that? He put it before you and you didn't fight the battle, amen. Right. Right. Listen to me. You're in the world. Everybody's in the world. Yeah. They're not of it, but they're in it. If they're saved, they're not of it. But the fact of it is there's things put before us. The devil brings things by us. The world tempts us. There's all kind of temptations. That's why we face them every day. Everybody faces temptation every day. Amen. And I'll tell you one thing. Get what I'm about to tell you. The devil will fight with people. My friend, that's a threat to him. Yeah. That's who we are war with. He wars with people that are a threat to him. Yeah. You say, he been bothering me. Well, you don't have to. He's got you. If the, listen. My old grandpa said it one time. 
after I got saved, we was talking about, I don't know what brought it up. We was at the hospital. My mom was in the hospital. I'll never get it. We was at Rowan Hospital. We was talking about the attack of the devil. And he said the devil, don't, he said the devil's like a, a hunter. But he don't hunt anything he's already got. Yeah. Yeah. He said, if you go rabbit hunting, you don't hunt rabbits you got in your hand. Yeah. You're hunting a rabbit that you can capture. Yeah, right. That's right. You know why it's a spiritual battle? Because he knows that. And he's going to war. He's going to, listen, he's going to bring things across your way to keep your spirit from worshiping God. Yes, he is. And if he can Amen. defeat you within your spirit, he knows you ain't going to do nothing for Amen. God. Amen. Absolutely. That's exactly right. That's yeah. why, that's why there's a battle every day. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, it's amazing to me. <laughs> Thank God how we can be in the will of God and walk in the spirit. Uh, and all of a sudden, something comes out of nowhere uh, and throws us uh, at a a battle and we can either fight and give it to God or live a defeated life. Amen. Right. Right. I'm going to say this. It's, it's a superior battle. We can't win it unless he fights it for us. You'll never win the battle unless God fights it for you. You say, oh, I can do it. You can't. No. You can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. But I'm going to tell you what, you got to come. Thank God I have to be willing. Uh, but it's got to be God that does the fighting. Uh, and God's going to have to take care of it. Uh, and if you look at this thing, uh, uh, my friend of all that you go through, uh, amen, I look across this congregation this morning uh, and everything my friend people go through uh, and have to fight against uh, is because we have an opposition. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's right. I used to coach basketball. I liked it. I don't do it no more. I had some good teams. I had some that wasn't so good. But this is what I'd tell them. Somebody's wheel's going to break. When you want it more than they do, and they know you do, you can break them down. <laughs> Listen to what I'm about to tell you, and I know this is a carnal illustration, but it's truth. A football game is not won by passing and running. It's won at the line of scrimmage. They run because somebody's winning at the line of scrimmage. They pass because somebody's winning at the line of scrimmage. It's all one right there. That's where it's one. You won't say where it's one. It's one in the trenches. Yes. It's one. I, I tell you, you can see people mentally falter. I'm talking about the best of men. I've saw mentally falter because that man before them had more about them in their will to succeed than that other crowd. Why did Paul tell Timothy endure hardness as a good soldier? Amen. You know what that means? He said, undergo hardship, stay yeah. with it. Uh, amen. Uh, and what did he say before? He said, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Yeah. Uh, he knew the battle thing. God wasn't, he couldn't do it without God. Uh, and when David was down there getting them five Whoa. stones out of that brook uh, and got on his knees to get them up uh, and put them in his shepherd bag, uh, I'm down you one thing. Uh, I believe David said, uh, this has always worked. Uh, and it always will yeah. because I know who's with me, thank God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Old Saul said, come here, let's try this armor on you. Yeah. It wouldn't fit him. You know why? Because, thank God, that ain't what God ordained him to put on. Right. You can try a lot of things, but you'll never get nowhere that you realize, thank God, you're going to have to fight with what God gives you. And listen, right here it is. It's the Word of God. That's the victory. That's what you fight with. And if you don't fight with that, you'll never win. Amen. Amen. That's the same thing Jesus fought the devil with. Yeah. He told him it's written. Uh, Amen. Yes, he did. That's right. So David got that stone, smooth stone, proven stone, out of his old script there, put it in the sling. It was that Goliath, that big old giant. You know, that giant is coming at him. And the Bible says he slank it. And you know where God took it, don't you? 
I was thinking about that. All that armor and that coat of mail and that helmet he had on. Thank God. God had to have his hand on it and say, pow. Yep. Amen. Thank God. Pow. Amen. Thank God. I, I told Brother Wade, I was talking about miracles the other week. Uh, and, and, and I was talking about which one I'd like to see. Uh, and I told Brother Wade, since I'm so competitive, I backed off some of that some because I know it's a fleshly thing sometimes. Uh, but I said, since I'm so competitive, I'd love to been there there. That day J David took that sling uh, with that stone uh, and slung it, thank God, and it landed in a big old uh, fat head Goliath's head. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and I'd love to see him fell to the earth. Uh, yeah. And I'd like to say, praise God, he won, amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Son, I tell you what, it's God. Yeah. It's God that fights the battle. Yeah. And he took that stone and he put it right in his forehead. Right. And it stuck. Yeah. <clears throat> and he went over there and stood on top of him and cut his head off. Yeah. That's awful gruesome, ain't it? Huh? And all of a sudden, it wasn't a God. And God says, God had David take that old fella, Goliath's sword, and cut his head off. That old giant sword, he cut his head off. Come back into the camp with the head under his arm. Praise God. I'm glad you think about that, friend. Here's a little old shepherd boy walking back in at the camp with a head of a giant under his arm. And thank God they're praising God. Amen. Amen. I tell you what's happening this day. Now get me, get what I'm saying. We're supposed to be humble and meek, but we ain't supposed to be a bunch of sissies. No, we're not. Amen. I tell you what's happened down at the church, even in our raising children today. You raise them like a bunch of sissies. And some people don't like it. Don't matter to me. Come on, preach it, brother. I ain't God. Dave said, Dave, listen, well, boy, I'm about to get it now. David, he was a keeper of the sheep. Yes, he was. He's down there keeping Jesse, yes. Jesse, his father's sheep. He was down there. He was a responsible friend. He could trust his own boy to go down there and take that food to his brothers during the battle. Amen. I'm just saying, thank God, he is already being raised to be a warrior. And I'm telling you, friend, God done that for him. Amen. Yeah. That's right. He was a ruddy old youth. Had a backbone, thank God, more than what his brothers had. That's right. You'll thank God one day you had somebody to tell you the truth and it wasn't scared of what people thought about it too. That's right. Jesus is our victor. Jesus Christ is our victor. He fights our battles. He had victory over sin. <laughs> oh, thank God. Jesus died on the cross. Thank God to have victory over sin. And praise God because he gave his life for sin. He had victory over sin. Amen. Jesus has victory over death. There ain't nobody could give you victory over death but Jesus. He rose again the third day. The grave couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't hold him. He overcame it. Amen. That's right. By his own power. He rose his own self. He got out of the grave himself. He rose again. We ought to live in that kind of power. Amen. He got victory over hell this morning. Amen. You say, who is going to hell, everybody? You're born a sinner, right. cond condemned, yeah. going to hell. God stopped yes, sir. through the gospel. Victory. I'm talking about victory. Hey, thank God there's victory. A man don't have to lose a battle. A man don't even have to find himself. He just got to do what God says. And God will fight the battle for him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad of that, aren't you? Yes, sir. 
Amen. Thank God we ought not never come to the house of God. I'm tired this morning, body, a little bit. Amen. Let this get to study as much as I'd like to have. But I'll tell you, don't change God. Don't. He's still the same. Thank God he still gives victory. I'm telling you, ought not never come in. My friend, without victory in Jesus and our soul, I don't know. Thank God that he fights the battle. Amen. That's right. I'm going to tell you one thing, friend. You can have victory this morning. You say, preacher, it's an awful big giant. Well, that's an awful big God, too. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. I'll tell you one thing about David. Praise God. He knew who won the victory. He said, the battle's the Lord's. Amen. Let's stand this morning.